What's good, Dub Nation? You're watching Golden State Warriors today by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Senior. Another loaded show on the docket for you all today. But first, have to give a shout out to today's presenting sponsor, Aura, for making the show possible. The all-in-one digital safety tool that can keep you and your family safe. Nowadays, everything lives online. Millions of people per year get their identities stolen, their bank accounts hacked. You don't have to worry about that with Aura. And you can get a free 14-day trial if you plug in that link at the bottom of your screen. It's Aura.com slash chat sports. So we start off with some Warriors trade rumors and some Warriors trade candidates. I've been asked this a lot by some fans of the Golden State Warriors, the reigning NBA champions. Could Golden State pursue a reunion with Kelly Oubre Jr., who played with the Warriors two years ago and this past year played with the Charlotte Hornets? So you look at what Oubre has been able to do the last two years. And we'll also get to what he said recently about the dubs, which was very Kyrie Irving like this past year with Charlotte put up pretty solid numbers and I think the production has never been a problem with Kelly Oubre Jr. For me it's been the lack of consistency and I'm not sure he's a piece that you want on a team that plays a selfless style of basketball and a team brand of basketball. So last year with Charlotte 26 plus minutes per game, 15 points per, four rebounds, 44% from the floor. My problem with Kelly Oubre Jr. takes a lot of shots and is very, very streaky. The inconsistency is a problem, only able to connect on 34.5% of his three-point attempts. And with the Warriors, actually played more minutes per game on a team that was down and played in the NBA play-in tournament. And for him, it was very frustrating for reasons that he talked about, which again, we'll get to coming up. Why I don't don't think it makes a lot of sense for Ubre to come back to the Bay for there to be a reunion of sorts. He's a little bit expensive, and I frankly don't think he's a fit on this roster. You look at the contract right here. 2021-2022, he made $12 million. This upcoming year, it goes up to 12 and a half. Then he becomes an unrestricted free agent in 2023 at 28 years old. I think he's a good player. I think he's a solid complimentary piece, a solid six-man type, but on a mediocre to bad team, not a team that's trying to win an NBA championship. Now, we're only getting started on Warriors today. Don't go anywhere as this channel continues to pop. More than 100,000 viewers on a lot of videos recently subscribe if you hadn't already done so. More Ubre talk and then Summer League notes also coming up around the bend. But first, I told you about our video views. I told you about our subscribers. Nearly 8,000 people now have subscribed to Golden State Warriors over the last 28 days. If you're a fan of this basketball team, do the right thing, do the smart thing by subscribing, by hitting that red sub button or plugging that link, youtube.com slash Warriors TV. It's incredible how well Warriors Today has been doing. We hit up our people at YouTube and we asked them, is there any Warriors channel in the world that's doing better than Warriors today? They told us no. And we're about to catch the Lakers report with subscribers. Can we get the 40,000 by Friday, let's say? Let's do that, then let's overtake the Lakers. It's a great rivalry on the basketball floor, a great rivalry here inside the walls of Chat Sports. Pivoting back to Oubre, not an efficient player, too pricey for a bench piece, in my opinion, considering where the Warriors are at financially. Very cap-strapped, and I have to figure they're going to pay Jordan Poole as well as Andrew Wiggins. And I don't want to squander assets for Kelly Oubre Jr. either. He also said this back a couple months ago about his Warriors stint. And again, this reeks of something Kyrie would say. I felt like the universe was trying to put me in a box last year. It's something that always clashes because it's a big deal whenever I'm trying to be put into a box because I can't be put Put in a box. A lot of box talk here. I'm going to continue to show you and prove to you why you shouldn't put me in a box. I think that just fueled me to work harder this summer and to come back next year and be, uh, be a better all-around player. Warriors basketball is all about team ball. Warriors basketball is all about making sacrifices for the greater good of the team. If Kelly Oubre Jr. isn't willing to make sacrifices and he's complaining about his role and he's complaining about how he's used, then stay in Charlotte for a mediocre to bad basketball team. What the Warriors will continue to do, make it to the NBA Finals six times out of the last eight years and win four championships out of the last eight years. This has been one of the most dynastic and impressive runs that we've ever seen in NBA history, and the Warriors have proved they don't need a player who doesn't want to be here in Kelly Oubre Jr. Also talking about Oubre because I appreciated this comment from Danny Hilding, a loyal subscriber of the show, and this is why he subscribed because we also interact with our viewers. Any chance Oubre can return to the role he was designed to play initially before the injuries to 
to Stephen Clay ruined his run with us. The only reason people hated on Kelly Oubre is because we overused him and expected him to hit shots like Clay. But honestly, in my opinion, I think he can play a Gary Payton the second role just as good, if not better. I think that Gary Payton the second is a better player in terms of fit. Okay, he's not the better player in terms of skill set, but. Ubre needs to get into a rhythm to play his best basketball. GP2 just fits in seamlessly. Danny Hilding, though, I appreciate the take and I appreciate the question. Should the Warriors trade for Ubre? It is the poll question for today's show. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Let me know and embrace debate. A lot of people like him. Some people don't. Let's see where you're at right now in the comment section. As I said off the top, Warriors Today presented to you by our fine friends at Aura. They're doing more to keep you and your family safe. And if you think about it right now, everything lives online. Our information, our bank accounts, and some precious information at that. Aura keeps your identity secure with extensive monitoring of all of your personal info. And what's great, you can keep your family safe, up to five people, but also you can start your free 14-day free trial if you use that link at the bottom of your screen. It's Aura.com slash chat sports. I'm going to put that link in the comment section as well as the description of this video. Make sure you use it at your disposal because limited time only, you'll only be able to use that deal. So we move forward now to some summer league takeaways for Golden State. Kawhi Santos, really impressing so far in summer league. Moses Moody, on the other hand, going through a little bit of a cold spell. You look at what Santos has been able to do in a couple of games in the California Classic, a second round pick for the Dubs here in 2022. Everybody was focused on Patrick Baldwin Jr., who has not played yet. James Wiseman, by the way, also not playing. But Santos, he's been playing really good basketball, man. I'm not sure if he's going to make this roster, but in the future, if he can be a deaf piece, then fine. 14 points per game, field goal makes, 4.3 on about 8.7 attempts, and he's been able to knock down about 40% of his three-point attempts. What he's been able to bring to the Warriors so far in the Summer League, size, shooting, passing ability, and awareness. And when I watch him, actually reminds me a little bit of a guy who got his start in the NBA coming out of Iowa State with the Warriors, and that was George Niang, who was let go by Golden State, and then he's really been able to carve out a role as a guy who offers good size, offers positional flexibility, and good three-point shooting, and pretty solid passing ability as well. That's what Santos can bring to the table. He's been playing pretty well. Moses Moody, on the other hand, 14th pick from the 2021 NBA draft, has not been playing all that well. 11 points per game, but you look at the shooting splits right here. Four field goal makes on 13 field goal attempts. He's only shooting sub 31% from the field, a paltry 18% from long range. That's not good. So my summer league notes here, Guay Santos, he's been number two in scoring among all players in the California Classic. Moses Moody struggling, and James Wiseman still not playing, but we talked about this the other day. Tom Downey did right here on the channel. He is expected to play at some point. That would go a long way in just trying to figure out what the Warriors want to do at that center position. Start Kavon Looney, start James Wiseman. What is his future health going to be after missing all of year two and playing sparingly because of injury in year one? Who are you most excited about in Summer League for the dubs? Just give me a name or names in the comment section. For me, it's definitely James Wiseman. I want to see the dude play basketball, so let me know right now in the comment section. We'd be remiss if we didn't hit on the latest with Kevin Durant. According to Shams, these teams right here, the front runners for Kevin Durant. Who did he list? He listed the Golden State Warriors. And look, I know some people are fatigued by the KD talk to the reigning NBA champions, but when big heads are saying, like Shams, that the Warriors are interested, I think that's pretty notable. Phoenix Suns, Miami Heat, Toronto Raptors, the other teams checking in on one of the best offensive players that we've ever seen. Here's what Shams had to say at length. All conversations are open for teams to call, reach out, submit offers. Teams like the Suns, Heat, Raptors, Warriors, those are among the teams that are going to be at the forefront trying to pursue a Kevin Durant deal. And we'll continue to harp on this. We'll continue to talk about it. The Warriors, really among all teams in the NBA outside of draft capital, can offer one of the best trade packages for KD to bring him back to the Bay for an epic reunion to take place. And according to Marcus Thompson, we've talked about this week as well, 
Warriors core players would be open to the idea, but then Rick Bucher said that Kevin Durant doesn't want to come to the Golden State Warriors. But you're looking at a potential package, James Wiseman, and these are all just pieces that can be thrown in the deal. I'm not saying all of them will be. James Wiseman, Andrew Wiggins, Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, Jordan Poole, some draft picks as well. Uh, those are the types of pieces that could entice the Nets if they wanted to trade away KD back to the Warriors, and then they'd be able to reboot and rebuild that franchise. KD or no KD? The Warriors brass right now probably saying no KD. Why? They want a fourth NBA championship in eight years without KD. Do you want him? Do you not? Type KD or no KD. Uh, no KD. No can do either. That would certainly work uh, in the comment section right now. And as always, thanks for supporting the show.